Hiya. <clears throat> so, the petition to save Castle Hill now has got 3,000 signatures. So, it is actually going to go to full council. Quite confident on that, because you only need 3,000 signatures to get a full council meeting on it. So, and this 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 is actually over the green belt. It's meant to be green belt, and you can't build on green belt. So, the councillor Bernard McGuinn, he's putting forward an argument that simply the green belt rules are ignored. The green belt rules weren't um, adhered to. So, it's about the green belt. So. The dispute over the green belt now should be going to full council because we've got 3,000 signatures. So, as far as I'm concerned, that's it now. It's going to, it's going, it is going to full council. Now, regardless of what your opinion is, yeah, they can't put the pub back the same original pub because the stone got stolen from it. So, no one knows where it went. The police should have been pursuing investigations into that because there were grounds for Barry Sheeman and an MP not wanting to have that pub there uh, and he, he did everything he can to get that could he's done everything he, he can I mean to get the cafe um, supporting Sandy so I think people like this have a lot of influence you know in, can make certain arrangements for things to go missing so I think the police should look into where the stone went for it you know um, so you, you can really do anything about the pub, unfortunately, even though it was a free house, a public house, it's gone now. There is a petition asking to bring the pub back, but you can't bring the actual pub back. And also, um, that petition also is opposed against the cafe. The petition for bringing the pub back is, is, is against the cafe being built, so it, it only supports this current issue with stopping the cafe from being built. Uh, built because of the green belt, so Now the thing is a lot of people don't really understand this and a lot of people don't really want to understand it or aren't bothered But I've seen a lot of people who were posting how much they love Castle Hill, right? So I think that in order to love Castle Hill you need to be open to learning more about it and listening and understanding more about it, you know so I've made a few videos about that, you know, because there's a lot of things that people aren't aware of that they should at least think about and consider. So, it's my opinion that it, it actually is a long barrow. I actually believe it's a long barrow, and I believe it's the biggest long barrow on the island. And when you go to all the long barrows and see the different configurations, and that they're all around the... the more or less the perimeter of the island, Scotland, Isle of Man, Orkney, you know, Wales, actually Ireland, and you know, the Seven Cotswold group. I actually believe that you can see them as satellite long barrows around, around this big one in the middle. And if you've got such a big one in the middle, you don't need that many any small ones near it. Now, it's always been known for being a hill fort, but there are a lot of hill forts, but none of the hill forts have this particular unique shape particularly of, of, of the oval shape, the eye shape, you know, the rugby ball shape on the top. And I think that's important because, you know, hill forts aren't just Iron Age. Hill forts go back way before the Iron Age. Sisbury, Andrew, um, sorry, James, um, James Sainsbury, that's his name, James Sainsbury for the South Downs Trust, he does a very good talk on Sisbury Hill Fort about it being prehistoric Stone Age and, and a big supply for the whole country of flint. You know, after the time when we were just hunter gatherers, you know, like the Aborigines are in Australia, you know, like wandering around the country finding out as bearings and where things are, you know, where the best places for things are. In the Stone Age, Sisbury was supplying flint everywhere, you know. So the, these sites are not necessarily to do with fighting and war, because Sisbury isn't at war with the country, it's, it's, it's got flint mines, it's supplying flint to the whole country, it needs a certain amount of fortification so people don't steal the flint if they're doing fair trading, you know, and I think <clears throat> even if a hill fort hasn't got a specialisation, there's usually something in the area that, it, that, it, that it's known for, like Uffington Camp's got the white horse, Old Oswestry is meant to have resources near in it, um, iron ore or metals that you can mine 
And I think that our hill fort, the same, had a specialisation. And I think they, when you think of long barrows, you always think of the chambered ones. The chambers have so many different configurations and types, but not within the local area. They've got different configurations and types over a large area spread out. So why not a configuration and type that, that you go on top of it? You don't go inside it. There are quite a few uh, hill barrow, long barrows that you don't actually go in anyway that aren't chambered, you know, and that's a different subject, you know, to do with a lot of people. People are buried in mounds, but there's no actual entrance where you come in and out of it. But the ones that are chambered, there is an entrance there where, where you know, it's, it's a doorway created, so it hasn't got anything to do with life and death. It's about going in and coming back rather than just being permanently sealed in there like some of the, 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 the burial mounds which are permanent burials, you know? Um, so, there are quite a few good videos that I've been watching recently that I think you should all watch. But I do actually believe, you know, that it, it is, it should be referred to as a long barrow hill fort, a hill fort long barrow, which is a combination of both. You've got every other combination of long barrow around the island you can think of. You've got doors and passengers on every different side. You've got ones that don't have any chambers that are different sizes. Why not have a long barrow that's huge and you go on top of it, you know? And, and if all the others are about different energies and, you know, experiencing different energies and ley lines and stuff, why, why not have, have this one to actually be on top of it, you know, and, and have a very large one? So, and then we've got resources. We have got resources, you know, which people, a lot of people don't want to talk about the resources, you know? We've got, um, you know, resources on the Pennines, you know, there, there are lots of resources we've got here that we could have specialised in to supply the whole country with, you know, or even if it's for learning certain things. So, that's pretty much it. Now, I want to talk about referendum because we've got the 3,000 signatures now, so it is going to be going to a full council meeting over the green belt being enforced. So, I don't know whether it's going to be, you know, make much difference now, whether we get another 2,000 signatures to make 5,000, whether you get 10,000 signatures, which is a lot for a local petition. Very few, if not no local petitions, get 10,000 signatures. You get 10,000 if you're petitioning um, Parliament or 100,000, it's 10 then 100,000. I've seen petitions with 7,000 signatures, which was a school meals petition and the Flockton Village petition, 7,000. So, you would expect more people to be interested, but they did a lot of promotion over the Flockton Village. They, every house had a notice in it. There were notices all around the village and big banners for people passing through for months, maybe even 12 months. It was a long time. So it wasn't, they didn't just get 7,000 signatures like that. They actually went out and made an effort. So I think to get 3,000, you know, it's not like we're going putting banners over the motorway or anything like that. You know, want people put happy, bir you know, people, happy birthday messages over the motorway. But at the moment, it's seeming to cause a lot of arguments, you know, because the reason is that people are in conflict between what should happen to it, you know. Um, so, you know, what do you expect? Do people, does the council want 5,000, 10,000 signatures, 15,000? If it goes, if it gets 19,000 signatures on the petition, right, the council won't decide anything. And this is what a lot of people, I think, aren't really understanding and realising. There's people arguing different ways amongst themselves, right? Oh, we want the pub back. Then the other group saying we want the cafe only because the council suggested it. No one would have thought of a cafe if the council didn't suggest it. Barry, it's Barry Sheeman. And then there's people who want to protect it and preserve it for the prehistoric site and the countryside that it is. Now, what these people need to realise is if we stop arguing and work together, right? It is going to full council now. It has got 3,000 signatures over the green belt. But that's the council looking at it and deciding. If everyone was to stop arguing between themselves, and if everyone were to actually sign it, like for example, I know there's some groups that have got 18,000 people in Huddersfield groups. I think there's a police officer who's uh, admin or moderator on one of them. They could easily get, you know, 19,000 signatures with a group like that. It's not impossible. 
if you kind of wake up and snap out of it a little bit and realize no matter what your opinion is if you all sign to get the 19,000 signatures right then we will have a local referendum about it and you actually will get to decide everyone will get to vote and decide everyone who has an opinion will get the chance to have the opinion made for whatever people want to happen to it and you will vote the council won't decide anything and rather than the council just making a decision based on very little feedback or input you know and i think it would be nice for a change to let the people vote on something because i'm not even saying that it should go either way what i'm doing is saying why why wouldn't you you want to um, actually end up voting and deciding and if, 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 if 9,000 people don't sign to get that referendum, I don't really think that they are that bothered either way about it. They can't be bothered if they don't sign, even no matter what your opinion is, so, so why argue? And I think that the signatures we've got, the 3,000, many are from specialist groups of intelligent people who do have an opinion about these sites, who have a lot of knowledge about these sites, and a lot of knowledge about um, subjects associated with and around these sort of sites, have already signed to protect the green belt order on it so you know and as for the pub people are complaining that they want the pub back but it's only got 191 signatures they can't be that bothered or they would have shared that petition around that's got 191 and got more signatures so to me that just seems a drunkard's answer it, 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 you know the pursuit of alcohol where does the pursuit of alcohol lead to other than getting drunk you know and it's like, you know, 